Real Virginia is proudly produced by the Virginia Farm Bureau Federation. Since 1926, Farm Bureau has been working to preserve Virginia farms and our rural heritage. Visit our website at VAFB.com. Hello everyone and welcome to Real Virginia, a show about Virginia agriculture and the people who produce the wonderful local products we enjoy. Brought to you by the Virginia Farm Bureau. Spring planting season is almost here and drivers need to be careful around farm equipment on the road. Roasting is a great way to prepare fresh vegetables and some farmers use hoop houses to kickstart their spring crops. Welcome back to Real Virginia, everyone. We're coming to you this week from Virginia State University's research farm in Ettrick, Virginia. Every year brings several farm equipment accidents on rural roads. Burke Muller reports that spring is one of the riskiest seasons for Virginia farmers to move equipment from field to field. With the spring planting season upon us, the time is right to remind everyone on the roads to take extra precautions and be on the lookout for slow moving vehicles. The biggest thing with farm vehicles is just being patient. Uh, farm vehicles travel at a different speed and take a lot of space uh, when they're moving from farm to farm. And so being patient, giving those folks that time to get from place to place. The danger is real. Last spring, veteran farmer Eddie Reynolds was killed while turning his farm vehicle from Route 221 into his farm in Bedford County. Jeremy Moyer operates a dairy farm in Amelia County. He says he's lucky. He hasn't had any close calls so far, but he knows he has to keep a sharp lookout. My main concern is people are always in a hurry and don't realize how large and heavy farm equipment is and how limited the visibility is on certain pieces of equipment. Um, they aren't exactly like cars or trucks and you can't see right behind you a lot of times. And, they, they're much wider than regular cars are to take up more of the road. Farm vehicles are obviously larger and slower than most everyday vehicles motorists encounter on the road. But there are also some not so obvious differences specific to farm vehicles that may catch motorists off guard. The tires aren't usually made for on-road use, they're more for off-road use. Uh, they do send, tend to make the vehicle move across the road in a little more erratic motion. Uh, if you see them on the road, you just really need to watch them, make sure that they make sure you realize they are going at a slow speed. Um, if you do decide to pass, uh, watch any equipment that they're pulling as well. Uh, the equipment can move across the road in a little more erratic behavior. A video produced by Drive Smart Virginia with the support of the Virginia Farm Bureau urges motorists who encounter farm or other heavy equipment to be patient, allow time and space to pass, signal before passing, don't use your horn as a warning, and don't wait for a signal to pass. Coming into the spring months, definitely we have a lot of crops in the area, a lot of tractors on the, on the roads at this time. I uh, just want to remind motorists just to be careful when you approach these tractors. They are going to be slow moving vehicles. They may even be slower than you realize that they're moving at the time. Uh, just to give them a little extra space. If you're going to pass them on the road, just be careful on when you pass. Make sure it's a safe area to pass and that you don't run the tractor off the road as well. The Farm Safety Advisory Committee for Farm Bureau really is committed to, to trying to resolve the issues that relate uh, to farm safety in Virginia and health as well. And so we've got a website, vafb.com slash safety. We hope folks will go use that site and, and find all the resources that they can. Uh, but in addition, if they're looking for resources, we want to help them find what's there, whether it exists in Virginia or maybe somewhere else. Uh, and if they uh, can, can just jump on the site, they have questions or concerns, let us know. We want to help uh, solve all the issues that we can. Glenn Dye has lived in Stafford County his whole life and says migration from Northern Virginia has put many more cars on the roads where he lives and works. It's just an everyday struggle when we do have to move machinery on, on the roads to, to coexist. Well, we're aware of the population and, and the crowded roads, so we, we try to make certain that, especially during school, uh, we'll try to move between 9 and 2 when the buses and the kids are off the road. It's normally the slower times. 10 o'clock is normally a good time in the morning. 
Virginia doesn't keep statistics on accidents specifically involving farm equipment. But the National Safety Council says 3,900 farm equipment vehicles were involved in roadway crashes in 2018, their most current figures. 92 of those crashes included fatalities. Motorists are also increasingly distracted by modern technology. I can't tell you how many vehicles that either I let pass me or, or meet on the road, especially from looking above, having a bird's eye view, how many are on their phones or, or doing something else. I saw it this morning on Interstate 81 hauling grain. It's scary to watch the cars swerve in and out of the lane because they're distracted and doing something else. Put the phone down, take an extra second to, to give a, a second look. And, and just pay attention to your surroundings. That, that's the, the biggest thing I can ask. Uh, we meet a lot of them on the road, even with a flag man in front of us, that they don't even see that because they're so distracted doing something else. And then they pop on me 17 feet wide, you know, on a back road. It, it's, <laughs> it's not pretty. Uh, we've been very fortunate we haven't had any collisions with the equipment. But if, if everybody could just slow down, take, take a minute, and so everybody can get to where we're going safely. In Stafford County, Virginia, I'm Burke Moeller reporting. Farming is considered one of the riskiest occupations in the nation, and highway collisions with farm equipment are just one of the risks farmers take every day. In 2017, 416 American farmers and farm workers died from a work-related injury. Transportation accidents, including tractor overturns, were the leading cause of death. Agriculture Safety Awareness Week is the first week of March in 2020, and this year's theme is 2020 Vision on Ag Safety. One reason farmers are at such high risk is they often work alone in remote areas where emergency services are far away. I'm Mark Viet. Coming up on In the Garden, I'm going to talk about when and how to prune your roses. Stay with us. Farm Bureau is the insurance provider of choice for farmers. But did you know all Virginians can benefit? In fact, most of our members are not farmers. As a member, you are supporting worthy causes like local Virginia food banks and the Agriculture in the Classroom program. Your $40 membership will easily pay for itself with our many savings options. Farm Bureau is made for Virginians. Get the membership advantage by going to vafb.com or contact your local Farm Bureau. How far back should you prune roses each spring? We visit with Mark Viette next to see how it's done in the garden. A couple things to keep in mind is you're gonna want a good hand shears to reach in if necessary. I sometimes like, at least with roses and thorny plants, the lopping shears, they're great you don't get too close to the thorns. The thorns can give some people a fungus. Not very common, but it can happen. I like a good pair of gloves. And many people wear safety glasses. One of the things you want to keep in mind is I wear two layers of a shirt because of these thorns. Always got to watch your face. The other thing is some people wear gloves that come up to here. When it comes to pruning knockout and carefree roses, there's sort of two ways to prune them. Sometimes with these roses, I'll let them grow two to four years and do no pruning. And then I'll come in and I'll do a hard pruning. The better way to prune these is maybe to prune them every year so you get these nice new long growths that give you lots of flowers. So I'll come in and I'll of course cut out some of the dead. There's going to be some dead uh, wood that you're going to find in these roses so I'm going to kind of prune that out. And then I like to prune mine anywhere from 6 to 12, maybe 18 inches tall. And the great thing about a lopping shears is you can grab them carefully and pull them away so you don't get scratched. Always watch your face. Pretty easy. Again, any dead? like this, remove it, 
This rose is pruned, ready to show off all its bloom this coming year. What I do find with roses and some things that uh, produce diseases, I will take them and throw them away. I don't use them in a compost pile. And I have got a great example of a rose that was unpruned for a couple years and I'll show that to you now. Here's an example of a knockout rose that we prune every year. And if you look at the base, the new stems are nice, vigorous, and small. I've let this knockout rose here go for two or three years. And one of the things you notice is not a lot of new growth coming from the base, but look at the large giant stems, which maybe three or four years is going to become a little more difficult to prune to get that nice new growth. The other thing you notice, the one we leave alone is a little taller. I'm Mark Viet. Join me next time in the garden. For more garden tips, go to inthegardenradio.com. Hi, this is Tammy Brawley with The Green Kitchen. Coming up on Virginia Heart of the Home, we're going to do roasted root vegetables, turnips, rutabagas, beets, carrots. Stay tuned. And now, a sneak peek into a day in the life of a Virginia dairy cow. They get their day started. They have some lunch. Get some exercise. Spend time with their friends. And then end their day with dairy sweet dreams. Real dairy, real life, real delicious. Roasting is an easy method to add flavor and texture to many Virginia vegetables. Chef Tammy Brawley shows us how in the heart of the home. Hi, I'm Tammy Brawley with The Green Kitchen. We're here with Virginia Heart of the Home at Meadow Event Park. And today I want to talk about one of my favorite things to do and that is eating in season. Right now in these cold weather temperatures we love to do roasted root vegetables and what I've got for you is a selection. These are Virginia grown, I'm very happy to say. Um, some came from Old Tavern Farm, some came from Tom Tin out in the Old Bay. And what I've got here is I have got some turnips, I've got rutabagas, parsnips, and I've got some carrots and I've got some fresh rosemary. I don't feel like I have enough carrots in this batch. I'm going to go ahead and snag one from my display here. Delicious organic carrots. We'll cut the core off. The thing about roasting, um, or really any cooking, not just roasting, you always want to cut about the same size vegetables, no matter what. If you start to cut too small, then your smaller ones are going to disappear. You're not going to see them or be able to eat them. But if you want to cut in the bigger sizes, they will cook at about the same time. Really important to do. So I've got a, a, a beautiful orange carrot here. I'm going to toss that in with these vegetables, with the turnips and the rutabagas, parsnips. If you've never tried a parsnip, you really should. It looks like a carrot, but white, but tastes nothing like a carrot. Really um, very savory flavor. I, I love parsnips. And rutabagas. We were talking about those earlier today. I'm, I love a rutabaga. It's a little bit of a sweet flavor. It's got a kind of a golden yellow color to it. When you get them, um, you'll see that they've been waxed, and that's just to protect the outside. You certainly want to wash the vegetables, um, but the waxing, you won't be able to uh, wash that off, but you'll be able to cut it off. So what we've got is we've got all these delicious, gorgeous vegetables here, beautiful, beautiful color. We're going to toss with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of kosher salt, and some coarse ground pepper. You want to get those nice and mixed up. You want to have your oven preheated, and all ovens are different. I've worked with a lot of different ovens before. Um, all ovens are different. Yours at home might be less strong than mine. It might be stronger than mine. So you want to know your oven. Um, I suggest roasting at about 400, 425 or so, and you want to watch. I would say something smaller, as I just mentioned a moment ago, something smaller takes less time to cook. These, given this size, will probably go in about um, 15 minutes or so, but I would say set a timer for 10 minutes and check. What you're looking for or nice little brown edges around the, the, uh, the cut sides of the vegetable and then they'll be done at that point. So we're going to pop these into the oven and we'll be right back. All right, after about 15-20 minutes our roasted vegetables are ready and this is how pretty they are. I absolutely love this color. Um, anything colorful is always going to be much, much nicer to eat. Ask any four-year-old. Um, so now we've got some delicious roasted vegetables here. We're going to platter those. 
You might remember I tossed them with some fresh rosemary, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of kosher salt and pepper. Beautiful white platter, what a gorgeous presentation. So there you have it, roasted root vegetables. We've got parsnips, rutabagas, beets, carrots, and turnips, all Virginia grown. Thank you for joining us today. This is Chef Tammy Brawley from Virginia Heart of the Home, and we'll see you next time. Recipes from the Heart of the Home can be found on the Virginia Farm Bureau website at vafb.com. And visit Chef Tammy Brawley's website at greenkitchenrichmond.com. Vegetables are important crops to many Virginia small farmers as well as a few large growers. In 2017, more than 1,800 farms covering 22,664 acres produced vegetables, potatoes, and melons in the Old Dominion. In terms of acreage, tomatoes, sweet corn, pumpkins, potatoes, and snap beans were the most popular crops. Most vegetables raised in Virginia are conventionally raised, but there are 163 certified organic farm operations. More than $111 million worth of vegetables, potatoes, and melons are raised each year in the Old Dominion. Consumer demand for fresh vegetables keeps growing, but it's tough to grow them in the winter. Ricky Gibson reports that's why hoop houses have become so popular with many Virginia farmers. Look closely as you drive across rural Virginia and you'll see dozens of them. Large, plastic-covered hoop houses. Shaped like Quonset huts, these structures are not quite a greenhouse, but they can make a big difference in a farmer's bottom line. They've been a big boost for the local foods movement. A high tunnel can also be used to extend your growing season, so a farmer would be able to use this to plant crops earlier in the spring and maybe uh, harvest a little bit earlier and thereby maybe getting a premium for their product. So when they go to, when it's time to market their tomatoes, for example, they might get a higher value because it's earlier in the season. There's nothing like standing in a 70 degree structure in February when it's freezing outside and the tunnels can get very, very warm. As a matter of fact, we can roll up and down the sides and that gives us some cooling um, from the sunlight, but they do get very warm and it's just so fun to grow in them because it's almost foolproof. Um, it seems like any seed you put in the ground, it just shoots up and it just needs some water and some fertilizer and it's happy and, and it makes you feel really good rather than fighting the environment um, outside, which sometimes does not cooperate. <laughs> High tunnels have sprung up across the Old Dominion in the past few years as many growers have taken advantage of a U.S. Department of Agriculture cost share program that splits the cost of building one. The structure has to be a simple one. It cannot have any supplemental heating or climate control mechanisms. That would turn it into a full-grown greenhouse. These structures are very um, relatively inexpensive, um, but they function well. They're, they're leaky and they're not the best looking structures as you look here, but they're, uh, they're good for, for what they are. The example here we've got are raspberries. Uh, so these right now, outside or inside, you don't want flowers on here because it's still, we've still got a lot of cold temperature still in this season to go. Um, but what's going to happen uh, in the spring as it's starting to, well, as it's starting to warm up, we keep, um, keep these curtains up at night, lower them a little bit when it gets too warm in the day, put them back up at night, and it stays warmer in here. They're going to bloom earlier than outside, and we're going to be able to harvest off these earlier than we would outside. And plus, we also might get a higher quality from from these particular plants. What we planted in the fall and that is keep, that's kept growing in uh, our produce high tunnel is salad mixes, um, spinach, bok choy, Swiss chard, a couple of different varieties of kale, a lot of beets, both gold beets and red beets, uh, some mustard greens, collards and turnip greens. Um, so we have the full variety, oh radishes as well, we have the full variety of uh, produce that will grow in the fall and then we'll replant a lot of that for the spring as well. Quinn says her other high tunnel is dedicated to raising flowers. Like many small farmers, she's found the high tunnels to be key to her financial success. She sells her crops and flowers to loyal local buyers. My customers have been amazing how much loyalty they've shown and how involved they are in, in the business. Um, I've had a huge group of volunteers that have helped me 
lift this off the ground from the very beginning. And without them and all of their friends around, I couldn't have done it. The number of high tunnels in Virginia is growing fast as more farmers see their advantages. Industry sources estimate there are more than 1,200 in the Old Dominion. Commercial kits are available for growers to buy and install themselves with a small team. Tomatoes are one of the most popular crops raised in the high tunnels, but almost anything can be raised in them. From annual crops like tomatoes and squash and cucumbers and even leafy greens and lettuce, to more perennial crops like the raspberries that you see behind me or strawberries or uh, blackberries and blueberries. It just depends on what they want to grow. But the main thing they need to think about is that they want a high value crop in this structure because it's cost a little bit of money to put this up and they are very, uh, it's a very management intensive situation. So they want to make sure that they are getting a, a high value for whatever they're growing in their high tunnel. Success stories like this mean that the next time you buy local greens or produce out of season, there's a good chance it was raised in a nearby hoop house. In Lancaster County, Virginia, I'm Ricky Gibson reporting. We're so glad you could join us this week to celebrate all the bounty Virginia has to offer. From the kitchen, to your home and garden, to our wide open spaces, we are proud to say that this is Real Virginia. For everyone from the Virginia Farm Bureau, thanks for watching. Make it a great week. Chesapeake Bay, Atlantic to Appalachia, home in my heart always. You're going to need me. You're going to need us. All of us. You're going to need our technical skills, our math, our engineering skills. You're going to need our help with your water, your air, your food. You're going to need our organizational skills, our problem solving skills. You're going to need our determination, our honesty, our compassion. You're going to need the next generation of leaders to face the challenges the future will bring. And we promise we'll be there when you need us. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. There are 30,000 roadway accidents each year involving cars and farm machinery. Farmers will be moving equipment for planting and harvest season. The slow-moving vehicle triangle in red and fluorescent orange colors and flashing lights allow for quick identification. When you see an SMV sign on farm equipment, slow down, prepare for sudden stops, and slow turns. Patience will save lives. Just remember we all need to share the road, we all need to be responsible, and we need to be guided by the law. Motor vehicle safety starts with you. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving? is drunk driving.